Hi everyone, my name is Shelby and you're watching Read and Find Out. Today I'm going to be doing a spoiler-free book review of The Turnaway Girls by Hayley Chewins. I received an advanced review copy of this book from Candlewick Press through the Library Thing Early Reviewers Program. That sounds so convoluted. So thank you to them because I loved this very much. This book is coming out on October 9th and I highly recommend going and picking it up. I'll give you a brief overview or introduction and I'll tell you what I liked, what I wasn't a huge fan of, and what my star rating was. The Turnaway Girls is middle grade magical realism, so it's fantasy but it has kind of roots in our reality. It just has this very magical quality to it though. This is following our protagonist Delphernia Undersea, who lives on an island called Blightsend, and Delphernia is a Turnaway Girl. Turnaway Girls are taken away at a very young age and they essentially create gold out of music. It's almost like they themselves are a filter for the shimmer, that's what it's called. But Delphernia can't make shimmer because when music kind of flows through Delphernia, she gets caught up in it. She can't just be this hollow being that filters out the shimmer. She wants to hold the music as her own and she wants to sing, but she is not allowed to. Turnaway girls do not produce music, masters produce music and masters apparently are men. The Turnaway girls are kept in this cloister which is essentially like a stone dome on this island. So they don't even see the sky or anything. They are contained within this cloister and there is a roof in the top that masters can come down through and they pick a turnaway girl, the masters who have achieved a certain level of significance or superiority. It may sound fairly obvious from the synopsis that this book is going to have a lot of feminist themes and tackle some very feminist issues. I also didn't realize that this cast of characters is quite diverse. Though I don't remember if it's explicitly stated that the protagonist is a person of color, they seem to be a person of color, there seem to be plenty of people of color in the story, and there is also a trans character, a trans girl, which is also never explicitly stated, the word transgender is never used, but it's definitely there. <laughs> it's on the page even if that exact label isn't applied. But this book is just brimming with magic and music and I can't wait to tell you what I loved about it because I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> First off, the book is written in such a lyrical manner. <laughs> I'm someone who enjoys that kind of writing, though sometimes I get annoyed if I feel like it's too over the top, which happens. But because this is magical realism, it fit the vibe of the story extremely well. I enjoy a good writing style in fantasy in general, but if it's too lyrical and it's like epic fantasy or high fantasy, it's not something that I feel like meshes as well with the story. This made a lot of sense, particularly given the character's perspective. We know that Delphernia is a musical girl, even though this isn't something that is supposed to be a part of her. So it makes sense that this poetic way would be her way of thinking, of speaking, of understanding things. I also looked at the back after I had finished reading it and Haley Chewins has experience in theater and music and literature and it all ties together so well and you can tell when you're reading this. I also mentioned the themes of this. The themes were on point. There's a heavy emphasis on being yourself. There's also a look at the way different emotions influence you and how you're emotions are impacted by your life circumstances, which probably seems obvious, but when you're looking at a young girl who is coming to understand feelings of rage that she has because of being oppressed, it just, it clicks so well. This is also a book that I just really resonated with in a lot of ways. I think that though it would have been a bit deep for a younger Shelby, younger Shelby probably still would have appreciated it. Dilfernia has questions in a world where girls are not supposed to question things. And though that's not exactly my experience or anything, that questioning part of herself was something that just feels like a key part of me. So this book was actually added to my Shelby and Books shelf, which I have on Goodreads for books that really resonate with me or I feel like they're reflective of me as a person in some way. I tweeted about how I can't wait for a finished copy of this book to come out because I need it because I want to be able to quote this because there were so many things that I just thought were so well said. I also thought that some of the ideas were very interesting, particularly with the magical realism. So allowing music to flow through you and you pretty much produce gold as a result. And other things that have to do with music that I won't state because this is spoiler free. I just loved this. There were a few things that I didn't like as much. 
Though I think this is beautiful and I think that the style is still middle grade, I wonder if this will confuse some of the younger middle grade readers. If it'll be too poetic, too symbolic. I think maybe not because there are some things like repetition, like repeating a phrase like three times that I think will make sense to a young kid. There are some other things that I'm just not as sure about. I'll be interested to see how this does with younger readers once it's actually published. And then, non-spoiler, the plot conclusion I thought was a bit quick. I wasn't surprised by where the plot went. I kind of saw it coming, but I tend not to hold that against middle grade books because I'm not the intended audience. But I did think it wrapped up a bit quickly. I'm pretty sure that the actual copy of this will have about 15 more pages than this does, but I don't know if that's just like kind of credits and acknowledgements and things like that, or if there's a little bit more to the ending. Another thing that I'll be excited to see. At this point, you'll probably be unsurprised to know that I gave this 4.5 stars. I really loved it. I thought it had a couple drawbacks, but ultimately it was great. And Haley Chewins is going to be an author that I am looking out for in the future. I would recommend this book to people who have specific YA and adult preferences, actually, just because I couldn't think of anything that was kind of equivalent in middle grade. I would say that if you like Lainey Taylor's writing style, given that I've only read Strange the Dreamer, this is very similar, but I like it better and I think it meshes better with the actual story and the genre because it's magical realism as opposed to high fantasy. Though you can have whimsy and everything in a high fantasy world, magical realism just works with it so much better in my opinion. I know that I said that Lainey Taylor writes the purplest of prose and that is true in my opinion. Some people may perceive this as also being just like super purple prose. I thought it was more well done, but also that is just my opinion. I haven't read The Handmaid's Tale, but some of the themes that were present in this are themes that I anticipate will also be in The Handmaid's Tale. And also some of the themes in this reminded me of themes from the Broken Earth trilogy, such as society profiting off of a marginalized group that has an ability. So this has those serious themes with the lyrical prose, but it also has a middle grade approach that's just full of whimsy so it can still relate to kids but tackle these serious issues and I just really love it and recommend it. I'm trying to think about triggers at the moment from when I was reading it. If I think of any that are relevant, I will link them in the description below. But anyway, that is gonna be it for this video. Comment down below and let me know if you are interested in reading The Turn Away Girls, or if you have read it, if you're watching this after it's published, or if you received an ARC. What did you think of it? Because I was a big fan. If you haven't yet, I recommend that you go pick it up or request it at your library. Anyway, thank you for watching, hope you have a good day, and until next time.